Monohybrid inheritance is a bit of a difficult topic because there's a lot of background information that goes into it before you can understand how the diagrams work and all of the principles that go with it. First of all, remember chromosomes are the way that your DNA is stored. A chromosome is just basically a big wound up ravel of DNA. And remember that you've got a set from mother and a set from father. And this is true for all species that they've got this combination from the male and the female parent. If we look at unraveled strands of DNA, we could see here that one little stretch of it, this gene here, could be the gene for hair color. So the implication here is that there is a gene for hair color from dad and a gene for hair color from mother. We can't say that there are two genes. This is really poor vocabulary. Instead, there are alleles. So basically, each version of the gene is referred to as an allele. And there are two alleles for each gene. During fertilization, what's going to happen is the nucleus of a sperm cell and the nucleus of an egg cell are going to fuse and this is what is going to produce new life. Now, this is a really important concept as we go on. We're going to follow the example of inheriting fur color in mice. So we've got this mother mouse which has brown fur and we've got this father mouse that's got white fur and if they mate, they are going to produce offspring. And the question is, what fur color would those offspring have? Before we can really answer that, we need to have a little bit more information about alleles. Now, alleles can be dominant or they can be recessive. If an allele is dominant, that means that it will always be visible. And visible is not a really good word to use, but we'll use it for now for simplicity. If an allele is recessive, that means it'll only be visible if a dominant allele is not present. Basically, the dominant allele will always be present over the recessive one, even if both are present. We can use symbols for alleles. It's typical to just use letters and we use capital and lowercase letters. So in this case, let's say brown fur for the mouse would be capital F, white fur could be lowercase f. The fact that brown is capital F tells us that brown fur is dominant to white fur. Now what this would mean is if a mouse had body cells that had one allele that was capital F, meaning the brown fur, and one allele that was lowercase f, meaning white fur, this mouse would be brown in color because the brown fur allele is dominant over the white fur allele. The white fur allele gets ignored. Similarly, if it had two brown fur alleles, obviously it would have brown fur, but only if it had two white fur alleles would it appear white. Quick reminder, there are two alleles for each gene. Now imagine this is the mother mouse with one brown allele and one white fur allele. When it produces its reproductive cells, these cells will only have one version each of the gene. They will only have one allele each for that gene. So it's quite possible that we could have egg cells that will have that brown fur allele and egg cells that will have that white fur allele. So what's the consequence of that? Well, we've got these mother cells that have all got capital F, little f. They've got the allele for brown fur and the allele for white fur. And the father's cells have all got little f, little f. We know that because the father has white fur and we know that white fur is recessive. So let's look at all of the reproductive cells that these parents could produce. The mother could have egg cells that are large F, that means they've got the allele for brown fur, but there could also be ones that have the allele for white fur. And there are gonna be lots and lots of these produced. The father, on the other hand, only has the lowercase f. He only has the white allele to donate. Now, one possibility is that this sperm could meet with this egg. The resulting offspring would be a baby mouse that has an allele for brown fur and an allele for white fur. 
This offspring would therefore have brown fur. Because it's got that dominant brown fur allele, that means it will have brown fur. But there is also the possibility that the mother's egg cell could be a white fur allele, in which case the baby mouse's cells would all be lowercase f, lowercase f, meaning it's got two alleles for white fur, and then the baby mouse would have white fur. So this is just basically opening up quite a lot of questions. We still want to say what color fur the baby mouse would have. And the thing is, we actually can't answer the question. All we can do is show the probability. And this is where something called a monohybrid cross comes in. We've got the mother with this big F, little f combination of alleles, and the father with the little f, little f combination of alleles. Mother's got brown fur, remember? Father has got white fur. Now, in order to calculate the probability of the offspring being brown furred or white furred, we can produce one of these little grids. And what we do is we put the mother's alleles in one row and we put the father's alleles in a column. Here we can see the possible egg and sperm cells, the possible gametes that can go on to fuse to create the baby mouse. And then what we do is we use the grid to look at all of the possibilities. Here, this gamete could combine with this gamete and that would produce an offspring that would produce a baby mouse with alleles big F, little f. Same thing again, these gametes could meet or these ones could meet or these ones could meet. These are all of the possible cells that could be produced for the new offspring. We can see that there are two out of four possibilities of the offspring having brown fur, and there are two out of four possibilities of the offspring having white fur. Basically, that's a one-to-one -one ratio, so there's a 50% chance that the baby would have white fur, and there is a 50% chance that it would have brown fur. There is some quite nasty vocabulary that goes with this, but you'll find if you master the vocabulary, it becomes a lot more easy to discuss this. Remember that we've got the brown furred mouse, and we know that this mouse has got an allele combination of F and F, whether it's lowercase or uppercase. So we can use the word genotype to describe the genetic makeup of an organism. In this case, for this one that's on screen, capital F, little f, is the genotype. The phenotype is the physical characteristics of an organism, and that results from the genotype. It also is influenced by environmental factors as well. Next, the word homozygous describes having two of the same type of allele, for example, two lowercase f alleles. Heterozygous describes having different alleles for a gene. So in this case, that capital F, little f, is heterozygous. Let's look at one more example just to cement this idea and show a slightly different way that we can lay out the diagrams. Let's imagine that we're talking about a different organism. We're talking about a rabbit here, and we're looking at rabbit fur color. We've got the female parent has got big R, little r, and that means that it is white in fur color. And the male has exactly the same genotype. Its genotype is big R, little r. The phenotype for each of these is white fur. So big R is the allele for white fur, and little r is the symbol for the allele for black fur. And we can tell from this information, because we've capitalized the letter R, that white is dominant. We also know this because both the white fur and the black fur allele are present, and yet only the white fur allele is present in the phenotype. Here's how we might lay out the diagram to try and find out all of the possible combinations of alleles and therefore the possible phenotypes we might have for the offspring. First, we write out all of the possible gametes. So we've got the two gametes that could come from the female and the two gametes that could come from the male. Then we zigzag to find out all of the different possibilities, all of the different ways in which the male and the female gametes could combine. The offspring genotypes are then easy to figure out from these combinations. Based on this, you can then say what color fur would each offspring have if it had that genotype. 
In this case, we can see that three of them would have white fur, one of them would have black fur. So that's a 75% chance that the offspring rabbit would have white fur. It's common for exam questions to ask for something called a phenotypic ratio. In this case, this is a ratio of white fur to black fur, three to one.